Hi, I'm Dala, and today we're taking a final look at the Nissan LEAF battery ID system. Buckle up, because this is going to get technical. Let's start with a short recap. I already made two videos on this subject. In the first video, I explained how the communication works. In the second video, I showed how to pair in replacement batteries using Nissan's own CAN commands that the Consult 3 Plus tool uses. In this final video, I'm going to show you how I absolutely destroy the ID check on the cars that I help battery upgrade. But first of all, let's talk about Leaf Spy. In my previous battery ID video, I showed the commands and gave a teaser that the pairing functionality was coming to Leaf Spy. A few months have passed and lots of people have tried it out. Just check out Glyn Hudson's video or Innovative Sustainable Solutions video. It is amazing. It really simplifies life when you do a battery swap. But today we are going to talk about the ID on upgraded cars that receive a bigger battery and need a can bridge. So, why do I still bother to try and come up with ways to defeat the ID check? This picture should explain it. I used to ask customers to send in their old battery ID with a Leaf Spy screenshot, and then I would painstakingly code it into their Canbridge firmware before shipping it out. This resulted in hundreds of software variants for one firmware release. Ouch! I could remove the writing of the ID so that the Canbridge only handles the upgrade and skips this. But then all customers would get the fault code after upgrading and have to buy Leaf Spy Pro for Android in order to join the beta program where the pairing functionality exists. Some people have Apple products, so this is not optimal. Uh, also, Leaf Spy Pro costs a bit of money. So, to recap. There are three main benefits that come from destroying the ID check. Customers will just have to order the Canbridge and plug it in. Easy as pie. Let's look at how the attack is done. This picture might look familiar. When you do a battery swap slash upgrade, the battery ID will be sent from the LBC to the VCM. The ID is a set of rolling codes that they repeat over and over again. Here you can see that the ID sent from the battery doesn't match up with the original ID that is stored in the VCM, and the diagnostic trouble code is set. Not good. Let's now look at the initial code that the Canbridge used to perform. Once the ID messages are intercepted by the bridge, they get overwritten by the ones that are painstakingly coded for each vehicle. This has worked, but it requires oh so much effort. Really, I have probably spent close to 100 hours of asking, coding, sending, flashing different firmwares depending on the ID. But now, are you ready for the grand finale? Can you guess how to improve? The following slide might shock you. Ta-da! Instead of going after the codes being sent, I targeted the code condition that loops from 0 to 3. All the Canbridge does now is to always write this number to 0. By doing this, the ID is never completed in the VCM memory, and the ID can never be compared to what it should be because it's just waiting for more information. This way, the fault code can also never be activated. They totally forgot to account for this crazy hacky-wacky approach. If someone coding low-level firmware is watching this, consider making a timeout check in the next revision. Checkmate. So, now I have a new approach that doesn't cause any DTCs and has been tested on several vehicles, speeds up my workflow, and it makes it possible to move can bridges around freely between vehicles. What an absolute win! I really hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I can finally rest with these blasted IDs. 
If you like this kind of content, consider giving this video a like, and I'll make more in-depth looks at hacking other EVs. And finally, massive thanks to all that are supporting me on Patreon. This video wouldn't be possible without you. Dollar out.